we take you now to the women's Super G. Lindsay Vaughn about to make her run. Captain Zero. Research explorer in time and space. Don't you mean in space? It probably wasn't a smart move to build his command center at the foot of an active volcano. Today, Captain Zero probes Uranus, a desolate cratered surface, constantly venting noxious fumes. So, uh, are we actually gonna see Captain Zero at some point? Somewhere, in a remote, uncharted region of a planet called Earth, stands the laboratory of Captain ah! Zero. And yes, there has to be a thunderclap every time I say Captain Zero. It's in his contract. Captain Zero and Experiment in time and space. Oh, wait, did I say that already? Sorry, I got excited. To plan for the future. Contact and established. We now transmit you direct to the laboratory of Captain Zero. Please stand by. Jet, are you wearing your official Captain Zero weightlifting belt? Over. Jet to Zero. Come in, Captain. Over. All secure, Jet. I'll contact you when I'm ready to land. Zero. Over and out. Yes, sir. Jet, out. And don't play with the electrical arcing thing. It's a vital component for doing science. What? No, of course we didn't just turn the footage of the rocket 90 degrees to the left. <laughs> Why would you think that? And his fascination with the novelty of space flight wears off almost as quickly as it took for us to lose ours in the real world. I wish someone would invent the internet so I could waste time more efficiently at work. Wish I had a rocket ship all my own. I'd blast off from Mars or Venus right now. I'd be famous. I'd go down in history as the first man to fly to another planet. You mean besides Mars or Venus? Over. Jet, Jet, open the docking bay doors, Jet, oh my god, ah! Over. Jet. Yes, sir, Bucka. Come in, Jet, over. Oh, yes, sir. Jet to zero. Come in, Captain. Over. It's about time. What in the world were you doing? Over. Well, I... On second thought, Jet, just forget it. I don't really think I want to know. Well, no, not exactly. I, I was sitting here concentrating. Okay, never mind. Alert the North Field. I'm coming in. Zero, over and out. Yes, sir. At once, sir. Jet, out. And wipe off the console this time. You make a real mess when you concentrate. Tetro. Yes, Jet? Captain Zero's coming in on the North Field. Right. See, Captain Zero could have radioed the North Field directly, but him and Tetro aren't exactly on speaking terms. So far, this show has not exactly earned the Captain Zero. Man, what a ship. It's stealthy, too. I barely saw or heard it land 20 yards outside the window. Golly, wish I'd been born a couple of hundred years ago. I bet I'd have thought of making airplanes even then. I'd have been famous. I would have gone down in history as the first man in the world ever to fly. I could have been a contender. Oh, hi, Captain. Hi, Jeff. How'd it go? Did you have any trouble? Not a bit. The ship operated perfectly. Mandy Patinkin is Inigo Montoya as the Dread Space Pirate Roberts. But what happened to you? Well, uh, I guess I got kind of lost in thought. You mean daydreaming? Uh, Captain, you're kind of in my yeah. personal space. I was the first man in the world ever to fly. You know, Jet, you'll fly a lot higher if you learn to keep your feet on the ground. Don't tell your mother what we do in here, Jet. What do you think of her? Boy, she sure is a beaut. How fast will she go? I don't know exactly. She's still in the experimental stage. I had her up to about 12 miles per second, but she's built to go twice that fast. Why, at those speeds, we'd reach Mars in almost 11 years. Macro. Yes, sir. You can take her up for a shakedown whenever you're ready. Yes, sir. Did you fart? Boy, you sure come a long way since man first decided to fly. No doubt about that. Captain. Yes? When did man first get the idea of flying? <sighs> well... The idea of flying has been in man's mind for a long time, Jet. Probably ever since he first noticed birds. Stop yelling at me, Captain Zero. I didn't mean to question you. Well, there's an old Greek legend about a man named Icarus who made a pretty successful flight. How? With wings, like those of a bird. Well, what happened to him? 
He did all right until he got a little overconfident and flew too close to the sun. What happened then? Well, it's an old Greek legend of a dumbass kid who got himself a library card and let me get back to work. Fell into the sea and drowned. <laughs> I wouldn't call that a very successful flight. It's just a mythological legend, Jeff. Like the Bible or the female orgasm. Making a flying machine. Well, if we skip over the Wright brothers and all the others who have contributed so much to modern aeronautics, we'd end up with Leonardo da Vinci. His machines were the first ones of which we have any real records. Leonardo da Vinci? I thought he was a painter. And you're right. For a change. One of the world's greatest. But he was also a sculptor, architect, doctor, Delta Knight, scientist, engineer, and practically everything else you can think of, as well as an inventor. Man, he sure must have been busy. He was. Like I was before you came along. Jeez. One of them had two huge wings, like a bird. Like in the legend of Icarus? Right. And the theory was that when a man got inside the machine and operated the levers, the wings would flap like those of a bird and the machine would fly. Did anyone ever try it? Not that I know of. Well, unless you played Assassin's Creed 2, that was awesome. Flapping wings, like a bird. Captain? Yeah? Can we go back to the time of Leonardo da Vinci and see his flying machines? Good idea. Set the time machine for the year 1515, <laughs> June the 12th. Man, the first Doctor Who was okay. suave looking. The castle of King Francis I in Milan, Italy. Bring up the voltage to 400,000. Is it possible to be that precise with a giant wall-mounted trackball? Stand by to activate the cycle reactor. Yes, sir. Only bad things can happen from this kid piloting the TARDIS. Stand by for operation of the time machine. We're going to try to project back to Leonardo da Vinci in the 16th century. If Jet doesn't screw it up. Electro generators, 8.713. Kleistron output, 4.995. Set the trilotron at 40.6732. Right. Ready, Jet? Ready, sir. Ready in the electric chamber? All set, Captain. Stand by for signal. Stand by. Keep waiting. Wait for it. Oh, crap. That wasn't a good sound. Activate the cycle reactor. Hey, it's the flux capacitor. Only crap. We're cracking the fourth dimension. Good. Projecting back into time. Uh, don't just take my word for it. Look at these nonsense gauges. The fourth dimension is cracked like hell. Steady. Increase the field output. Double the rise time. 1600. If one of those vacuum tubes blows, they're all dead. 1650. Stand by. 30. 20. 1515. Cut the cycle reactor and lock it. I'll set the parking brake. Can we make it, Captain? I think so. Activate the sound rays segregator and patch it into the time machine audio. Yes, sir. Oh, and remind me later, Jet, we need to swing by the Old West. I need to give Doc Holliday his mustache and goatee back. Uh, Jet, I think you just parked us on Leonardo da Vinci. All set, sir. Stand by to activate the view screen. Yes, sir. Bring up the beam focus. Check off multiplier. Check target voltage. Wiggle the mouse. Increase image acceleration. Disengage the screensaver. Golly, what's that? That's the castle of King Francis I in Italy. But I thought we were going to see Leonardo da Vinci and his flying machines. We are. But in the year 1515, da Vinci was the royal painter. He lived in that tower on the right. Stand by to refocus inside. Yes, sir. Pina gotta da vida, honey. There he is, Jet. Leonardo da Vinci. Considered by many to be the greatest genius who ever lived. Golly. What's he doing? He's working on the Mona Lisa. One of his most famous paintings. He started it many years ago, but he died still feeling it was unfinished. There, finished. What's a funny looking thing over there on the right? That's da Vinci's model of a 10 barrel gun, the forerunner of the modern machine gun. He also had ideas for tanks, armored cars, and many other instruments of war centuries before they were ever built. Like the Segway. Da Vinci was far ahead of his time, Jet. In fact, it wasn't until our own century that his greatness as a scientist was fully realized. For instance, there's his model of a swinging bridge, a projector, and sketches of pulleys and many other things. Calamity? What's that? Oh, that's a model for his greatest invention, the water slide. That aerial screw was meant to be turned by manpower at a speed to lift the machine and its occupant into the air. Of course, manpower would never have done it. Because it's impossible for a man to screw himself. That helicopter would actually have flown. Golly. Captain, look. It's a model of your hunter from the future. That's right, Jet. 
Leonardo developed the principles of both vertical and horizontal flight. But mainly downwards flight. And that machine is the original forerunner of powered aircraft, conceived almost four centuries before man finally got off the ground. And now for the hidden message, so dark the con of man, yes. In qualche modo devo fissare l'espressione dell'anima, e non solamente quella del volto. Oh my god, that's perverted! I never knew that's why she was smiling! Jet, set the language rectifier to Italian so we can understand it. Yeah, it's an early version of the Universal Translator. It only runs on Babelfish. No use. You know how I want it to be. Cannot make it so. Oh, if only a spaceman from the future would come to inspire me. Oh. Uh oh, I think he's gonna sing. Life is now short. What if I complete it? Nothing. I mean, okay, I invented the hydraulic pump, but believe me, that doesn't get you chicks. My painting, my studies. All unfinished. Oh, come on, you finished your beard. And so little time left. Huh. If you think about it a certain way, this man kind of looks like a bat. A Batman, as it were. My flying machines. What good are they? And my muffiny hat. Oh, what good is it? I know what I could do. I could audition for the role of Dumbledore. My studies of birds in flight. Experiments on air currents. What could possibly come up? Hallmark Family Classics presents It's a Wonderful Life 2 with Leonardo da Vinci. Too many projects and too few complete. I got 99 problems, but a bitch ain't one. What is the use to go on? Who will know or understand? Well, Saruman might understand. Waste. Waste. That's it. Screw it. I'm going to burn this mother down. He thinks his wife is wasted. He thinks she has done nothing. That's the way it is with great men, Jet. The more they learn, the more they realize is yet to be learned. But isn't there some way we could show him how important his work is? Maybe. Well, no. Maybe there is. Stand by to activate the materialization chamber. Perhaps we can show him. You mean we're going back to the 16th century? No. We're going to bring Da Vinci to the 20th century. Stand by. So, a man from the future kidnaps Leonardo da Vinci because he looks sad. He's materialized out of the 16th century, Captain. Good. Watch the chamber. He should be coming in. Proton neuron waves are entering the electrostatic field. Amplify the fakey techno babble. Increase the nonsense filter. Transforming from electrical impulses and beginning to materialize. Coming in. He's in. Jet, you strap him in the harness. I'll grease up the probes. Senor da Vinci. Uh, what? Ah, ah, aliens! Demons! Ah! Uh, who are you? Where am I? This is not my beautiful house. This is not my beautiful wife. My God! We're your friends. We brought you here. But, but how? And why? Uh, and what sort of place is this? This is my, my studio, you might say. Where I experiment in time and space. Uh, and space, yes. And space! And good, uh, try to keep up, old man. Ah, uh, yes. I, too, have made some experiments in space. And models of flying machines. You boys want to buy one? But I fear it is for naught. No, Mr. Da Vinci. I'm going to show you what has become of some of your ideas and experiments. What has become? What? Do you not mean what will become or what might become? No. What has become. You'll find this difficult to believe, Mr. Da Vinci, but you are now in the 20th century. The what century? The 20th. It's almost the year 2000! Oh, I see. <laughs> Strange, I could almost believe I were awake. Yet I know this can only be a dream. Come with me, Mr. Da Vinci. Of course, of course. So basically the fabric of time, causality, and history is just taking it full in the ass at this point. Coming, Jeff? Uh, uh, later, Captain. I want to have another look at Mr. Da Vinci's flying machines. Okay. I'll just be showing Leo Halo 3 in my room if you need me. Yes, Captain Zero is watching you masturbate. And Jet goes and draws glasses on the Mona Lisa. The first flying machine. Call it. 
I wonder if it would really work. Gee golly, I wonder what this history eraser button does. Oh, the space helmet has built-in earphones for his iPod. And the whole Captain Zero thing isn't really his name. He just trademarked it so he could put a big Z on all of his official equipment. And the, uh, the helmet does what exactly? How could a rocket ship or an airplane develop out of this? Oh, I know what you could use the helmet for. You could use that hook on the top to open oil cans. Looks as if it might fly, though. And he instantly breaks it, the Nazis win World War II, and as a result, none of them are even born. Good job, Jet. And that's how Lost ended. The one thing you lacked in your time, Mr. Da Vinci, was an efficient source of power. And the smallpox vaccine, I guess. ...for generating electrical power here at the laboratory. Unbelievable. Simply unbelievable. Come, I still have more to show you. Jeez, Bill and Ted did less damage to the timeline than this. Ah, crap, I tore it bad. Uh, let me think, uh, has scotch tape been invented yet? Wait, that gives me an idea. I could jump off that and put a video of it on YouTube. Oh, if I took this up to the top of the tower and pushed off, I'd be the first man in history ever to fly. Yeah. People like Jet are the reason there's safety warnings on McDonald's coffee. Heavy. He starts swinging the wings around like a doofus, knocking over priceless works of art, irreplaceable models of technology, histories are circling the drain, nations are rising and falling. So, Leo, what did you think of Highlander? Pretty cool, huh? And there's our latest development in air and spacecraft, the rocket ship. Fantastic. Utterly fantastic. There's still more to see. Bruce Willis made a movie about you forever enshrining your place in history. It's called Hudson Hawk. Let's give it a whirl, shall we? And now, Mr. Da Vinci, I'm going to refocus the view screen from your studio in the 16th century and show you some of the things that are going on in the world today. Okay, do you have to? These are but a few of the types of aircraft that have developed from your original flying machines. You lacked an efficient source of power, which has since been supplied. It's called petroleum, a limitless natural resource. But your theories of flying were far ahead of your time. And the original experiments you made in your studio have led to these experiments in the sky, at heights far above the clouds, and at speeds faster than the speed of sound. Fantastic. Yes, the technology you pioneered would later be used to kill millions. And here's the nerve center of a modern airport, the control tower. So many planes in the air that traffic must be controlled to prevent accidents. We pay them crap and work them till they die. Yes, airplane pilots must check with the tower before takeoff and before landing, as well as during flight. Thousands of airplanes come and go through the day and through the night carrying passengers and cargo on regular schedule. Unless you're flying southwest, which doesn't make any distinction between people and cargo. Of which the model of your aerial screw is the forerunner. My theory of compressing the air to obtain lift. Right. In fact, if the model in your studio had an efficient source of power, it too would fly. But then, of course, Skynet became self-aware, and well, that's a whole other story. Inside of which, conditions of flight are manufactured, and experiments with air currents are carried on. Inside those tunnels, winds are made to blow at hundreds of miles per hour, so that flying machines may be safely tested. Yeah, speaking of things that blow tons of hot air, jeez. And here's the latest development in powered flight, an experimental flying platform developed in the United States. Wait a minute, those existed in the 50s? What a ripoff! I want one! I demand one right now! No, it's true, Senor Da Vinci. The most recent developments in aviation are away from the fixed wing of horizontal flight with its many limitations Help. and back to your long-neglected theories of the flexible wing and vertical flight. And we have LSD. Now, I want to show you one of the world's best-known paintings. Do you recognize this? Why, certainly. My Mona Lisa. Yes, known all over the world as one of the great works of art. And you are known as one of the greatest of artists.
But you die in about four years alone, painfully and totally unappreciated. Yeah, ready to go back? And now, Mr. Da Vinci, I'm going to send you back to your studio in the 16th century. Your life has been most worthwhile. And you still have much to do. Yes, yes, my studies and experiments are certainly not in vain. Now if you'll just sit in the chamber there. Yes, yes, of course. I shall tell all I see of the strange spacemen from the future with their aeroplanes. And thank you, whoever you are, for conducting me through a most fantastic dream. <laughs> oh, I've been hitting the old Toby hard this week. Goodbye, Mr. Da Vinci. Sorry, Mr. Da Vinci, I'm afraid you've seen too much. Well, time to die. Now turn the machine off, you idiot! There's a fly in there! Oh yeah, that's great. Yeah, just give Leonardo da Vinci transporter psychosis. Oh crap, he's really not moving. I think he's dead. Uh, this didn't happen. I rule. Jeff! Jeff! Yeah, oh, great. Is he in his room concentrating again? Tetro! Yes, Captain? Is Jeff down there? Why, no. I thought he was up there with you. Okay, thanks. Tetro's one of the great unseen characters like Norm's wife, Vera. Jeff seemed mighty interested in Da Vinci's flying machine. A little too interested. Ugh. I wonder if he could have... Nah, nobody's that stupid. Not even J... Oh, hell. The machine has disappeared, and so has Jet. Petro, stand by to take over. I'm going back into time. Yes, sir. But what's wrong, sir? Jet disappeared with Da Vinci's flying machine. Well, what's wrong with that? The machine never worked. I think Captain Zero needs to refine his interview process. It's Phantom from Crankor. Ha, ah, ha, ah, ha, ah, ha. Ah. So this never came up during employee orientation, you know, uh, don't steal prototype historical artifacts and jump off towers with them. He is Captain Quailhead! I'll bet he's gone up on the roof of that tower. <laughs> Aliens go- No, Thetans are- Oh, why didn't I teleport closer? Yeah! Yeah, at this point, Captain Zero really has to ask himself if he's that responsible for Jet, or if he's just too stupid to live. Golly, I can see the government changing from here. Everything seems to be operating all right. And I'm certainly high enough to get a good start. Italy, people not included. Colin, if this thing works, I'll be famous. I'll show that dork Icarus the meaning of hubris. If only I had a time machine or something so I could go back into the past and stop Jet from stealing the hang glider. Hey! Jet! Yeah, Captain Zero's a great explorer of time and space. He can't even watch a 12-year-old kid. Jet! Fly, dumbass! Fly! Ah! Oh, you're still alive. Captain! Help! I'm coming. Just give me a second. Old Captain Zero's got a bad back, you know. Hang on, Jet. Hang on. Oh, that's brilliant advice. Thanks, Captain Zero. I'd never thought of that. Let's see if I can just stomp on his hand. Good. I'm almost there, Jet. Hang on. Uh, Jet, you do realize you could just teleport back onto the ship at any time, right? Hurry! Ha! Loser! The time has come, Jet! Sayonara, sucker! I can't maintain my balance. This platform, it can't be more than 18 inches wide. Don't move. I'm just going to take your helmet first. It was really expensive. Now, what in the, how did you tie a knot behind your own back? Meanwhile, Leonardo's stepping out the base of the tower. Well, it's a brand new day. My life is renewed. And all of a sudden, a hang glider crushes his skull. What's the matter with you, Jet? You trying to get yourself killed? No! I just wanted to be the first man in history ever to fly. You almost were. Straight down. Yeah, I'll be honest. I don't see upper management in Jet's future. 
Yeah, still, that was a better time travel story than a sound of thunder. Jet, you're a disgrace to the Z. I still think it would have flown if that ledge hadn't gotten in the way. <laughs> no, Jet. This kid. Even though Da Vinci designed machines for flying way back in the year 1515, it wasn't until 1903 that man actually flew under power. Yeah, no child left behind my ass. Almost four centuries later. That's right. Da Vinci really was ahead of his time. Yes, but once we got off the ground, we really moved fast. Well, most of us did, except you. And there's no telling where it'll end. Western Union! Be sure to be standing by when we again transmit you to this remote location on the planet Earth where Captain Zero and his associates will conduct another experiment in time and space. Oh my god, the cap's blown! Evacuate the facility! This is not a drill, people! Roy Stevens, better known for his role as Guitarzan. Wait, that's Ray Stevens. Hey, now wait a minute, who the hell played Tetro? That's gonna drive me nuts now. Well, it's not much of a time tunnel, but uh, here we go. Woo! 